Today on KUJH News, the latest on the rape investigation at McCarthy Hall, the residence hall for the KU men's basketball team. KU professor Burdette Loomis gives us analysis on the surprise retirement of Congresswoman Lynn Jenkins. Men's basketball puts its 18-game winning streak on the line in Morganstown, and the women's search for their first conference win in Stillwater. All your news from the hard court coming up next. From the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Tuesday night, KU Public Safety released a report of an alleged rape that took place at McCarthy Hall last semester. KUJH reporter Alex McLoon is live outside McCarthy Hall with more. Chloe, last night the KU Public Safety Office released a report of an alleged rape alleged that rape took place that took at place McCarthy Hall last, last month just, month last after, month just finals after finals week. week. The incident, the incident, incident five witnesses and the victim included the victim was a 16 year old female from Missouri that is a non KU student what we what we know right now is five witnesses are members of the men's basketball team which live here at McCarthy Hall it's also worth noting that the hall also houses other KU non athletes who are students now uh, what we know what we also know is the district attorney has not received any information from KU public safety Reporting live from McCarthy Hall, Alex McLoon, KUJH News. Thanks, Alex. The discussion of a new transcript notation regarding a non-academic misconduct that was presented to the Kansas Board of Regents last December has been dropped. In December of 2015, university presidents gave approval to proposed Kansas Board of Regents policy that would help inform universities if students have been expelled from another school or criminally convicted for sexual assault before agreeing to admit them. The notion never reached full Board of Regents for a vote, and the board completely dropped all discussion. Although KU is one of the six Regent universities to apply non-academic misconduct transcript notations, students are still reacting to the Board of Regents dropping the notation. And I think that it's a proactive measurement of keeping campuses safe. Ultimately, the Board of Regents' job and every institution's job is to make sure that the students on their campus are safe and are in an environment that's conducive to learning. So if this is something that students would be bringing to their campus if they're transferring both in or out of the institution, that's something I think the public should know. The Board of Regents ended the discussion after they determined very few students are actually expelled or suspended for non-academic misconduct. It is not yet decided whether or not the notion will go back to the Board of Regents for a full vote. Kansas City International Airport found itself on President Trump's list of transportation and infrastructure in line for federal funding. The list, titled Emergency and National Security Projects, features 50 sites across the country. President Trump met with governors from around the country this week to discuss the plan and discuss which sites would make the list. Throughout his campaign and early into his tenure, Trump decided or has made infrastructure rebuilding a major point of emphasis. The list features a $12 billion reconstruction of rail tracks between New York City and Newark, New Jersey, and a $3 billion project for Chicago's Transit Authority and Union Station. In addition to tackling infrastructure, President Trump will be turning attention to Chicago's increasing crime, crime rate. In a tweet yesterday, Trump called the situation horrible carnage and threatened to send federal troops in if it's not resolved. There is some disagreement as to how many shootings have occurred. This month, the Chicago Police Department reported 182 shootings and 38 homicides. The crime rate in Chicago has been an issue for Mayor Ron Emanuel, who called for more federal support for Chicago's police department in an interview on Monday. He echoed that sentiment in a press conference on Tuesday. There has to be more focus on giving our police both the certainty, as I've talked about, to be both the highest professional standards with proactive policing. And if you look at everything that's happening, uh, and where it's happening in the city, making sure our officers have the support from the public and the leadership to do what they need to do to provide the security and safety so they have the confidence to do their job professionally and proactively. Coming up on KUJH News, Congresswoman Lynn Jenkins announces her resignation, what that means for the governor race in 2018, plus an update from Watkins Health Center on the recent influx of mumps cases around campus and a controversial football transfer student announces his commitment to KU. The latest on Darian Jackson's status coming up in sports.
we connected so fast when we first met. I think that our relationship will last for a lifetime. Being a role model for someone, being there for someone, there's nothing I can compare it to. She has uncles up in Minnesota that treat me like, like I'm their own now. I feel like she's like actually my big sister in a way. It's, it's been one of the best decisions I think I've ever made. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Tell you like that. Congresswoman Lynn Jenkins announced on her social on her website and social media this morning that she will be retiring from political office at the end of the congressional term in 2018. According to a statement from Jenkins, this is the time for fighting for Kansas and making the tough calls, not fundraising and campaigning. This is a time we can fix the tax code, effectively reform the health care system, and make the federal government as a whole work better for the nearly 72,000 Kansans I serve in Congress. Jenkins was a favorite to run for governor in 2018, according to the Topeka Capital Journal. She said she will pursue opportunities in the private sector when her term ends. It's that time of year again where it seems that everyone around you is sick. An email was sent out recently to all of KU students confirming a total of nine cases of mumps were identified on campus. Dr. Greg Hamill, a primary care physician at Watkins Health Center, says those getting sick are the ones who have been immunized. What we look for is someone coming in with fever, aches, like a viral type symptom, and then maybe have swelling in the parotid glands here on the side of the face and the jaw. Um, and then we end up doing special testing to, to confirm. Dr. Hamill's tips for staying healthy are what we've all been told since we were kids. Stay away from people who are sick, drink lots of water, eat healthy food, and make sure to get a good amount of sleep. Dr. Hamill also said that they have not seen any more cases of mumps since students have returned to campus from winter break. Today was a cold day on the Hill for students. Carson Vickroy is here with the weather. Yes, Chloe, it was a very cold day today, much colder than yesterday, so conditions were cold, but especially those northwest winds, which made it feel significantly colder than what we had yesterday. It was about it's 36 degrees right now, and temperatures will continue to decrease as the night goes along. <laughs> we do not have the graphics, but you know... <laughs> We got a nice little black screen here, temps 36. This is the forecast for tonight. It's gonna to be pretty dark and northwest wind. Got some clouds over here. Um, I look pretty good today, don't you guys think? Got the nice hair going with nice tie. I hope you guys like my tie. Um, it's blue, it's nice, I actually got it. Um, back to you, Chloe. Well, Carson, thank you for that. Your tie does look great. The weather in Kansas may be gloomy in Lawrence. Oh, the weather may be gloomy in Lawrence, but it's certainly been fair for Uber drivers across the country today. The ride-sharing giant reached a $20 million settlement for misleading drivers about their earning potential. Drivers claimed Uber promised an earning of over $90,000 in New York and $70,000 in San Francisco. In reality, the FTC found less than 10% of drivers had earned that. The impact seems to be felt only in bigger cities. Shep Jones, a KU student and Lawrence Uber driver, said Uber never led him to expect more earnings in such a small market. When I started working for Uber, my expectation was making a couple hundred dollars a month. Um, wasn't really misled because it's a, it's a smaller market 
versus San Francisco or New York. Uh, if I were to go work and you know be an Uber driver in Chicago, I could the you know the expectation would be kind of make you know 50k a year. Thousands of drivers across the country will be entitled to a piece of that settlement. Well, Chloe, in the world of sports, we've got a busy week. KU women's basketball is in Stillwater tonight. We have that preview. Plus, men's basketball ends their 18-game winning streak in Morgantown last night. What's next for the Jayhawks? Stay with us. Take a look under your bed. Find stuff under there? What about jobs? No? Now try your closet. Still no jobs, just more stuff? Well, you really have both. See, stuff is defined as household articles considered as a group. Sometimes this stuff is no longer needed. Wait, no longer needed? I can't be right. Because remember those jobs you were looking for? Those are really needed. And they're the stuff inside your stuff. Our job is to unlock those jobs and it starts when you donate your stuff to your local Goodwill. Here's how we do it. When you donate to Goodwill, we sell your stuff to provide job training for people right here in your community. So just by teaming up with Goodwill, you help create jobs. And isn't that worth parting with the leftover guitar from your 80s cover band? Goodwill, donate stuff, create jobs. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, I am a witness and so are you. Earthquakes you see in movies are one thing, but real life is a completely different animal. Just because you can't predict an earthquake doesn't mean that you can't prepare for one. In the event of a real earthquake, you should drop, cover, and hold on. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake and practice what to do to keep you and your family safe in the event of a real earthquake. And you'll be seen as a hero by your family and your loved ones. Visit ready.gov slash earthquake today. Welcome back to KU Sports. The KU football team is no longer pursuing Duco transfer Darion Jackson. Jackson verbally committed to KU earlier this week on his Twitter page. KU Associate Athletics Director Jim Marcioni said that Coach Beatty had informed him Jackson is no longer among their prospects that they are recruiting. The former Boise State safety was suspended for a semester in 2016 during a sexual assault investigation. He was never charged, but later transferred to Coffeyville Community College last year. The Jayhawks were one of four ranked teams to fall last night in a brutal Tuesday of college basketball. Last night's loss to West Virginia makes it four straight defeats for Kansas and Morgantown. Coach Self was less than pleased with the defense from last night. West Virginia's easy buckets forced the Jayhawks to play zone for only the second time this year. It didn't seem to help much as the Mountaineers combined for a total of 16 dunks and layups. The Jayhawks end up falling 85-69. The number four Kentucky and top ranked Villanova also came up short last night. Speaking of Kentucky, KU will be traveling to Lexington to take on the Wildcats this Saturday. Tip-off will be at 5 p.m. on ESPN. The Jayhawks women's basketball team hopes to pick up their first Big 12 win tonight as they take on Oklahoma State in Stillwater. The team will turn to leading scorers Jessica Washington and Kenzie Calvert to set the offensive momentum. The Lady Cowboys are 2-5 in Big 12 play. Tip-off will be at 7 p.m. and you can tune in to Jayhawk Radio Network to catch the coverage on that game. The KU men's track team is ranked for the first time this season. The team cracked the top 25 after a strong outing at Kentucky last week. The team was led by senior pole vaulter Jake Albright, who posted an NCAA leading mark of 18 feet 2 inches. Albright was also voted Big 12 Male Athlete of the Week. This gives KU Jayhawks strong momentum heading into Friday's home meet. The Jayhawk Classic will begin at 2 p.m. Thursday and continue on throughout the day on Friday. 
There are going to be K-State, Wichita State. Um, are you going to be at that meet? I will be there. Um, <laughs> Great. Are you excited I, for it? Yes, I cannot wait. It's going to be a, a really fun meet. Yeah. So. Well, after celebrating 50 years of its most famous sandwich, McDonald's is giving away 10,000 bottles of its Big Mac special sauce. The fast food chain is doing the giveaway for its, as a promotion for its new Big Mac sandwiches, the Grand Mac, the Big Mac Jr. To get a limited edition bottle, you can follow McDonald's on social media pages or download its iMessage app called McDonald's Special Sauce Finder. Once you find the location, you tell them the secret code phrase, there's a Big Mac for that, and the bottles of Big Mac Special Sauce will be available Thursday at participating locations around the country. I honestly have never tried a Big Mac. Have Not you tried a Big Mac? I actually have never tried a Big Mac either. Okay, so we need to go on Thursday. I'll go with we, you. All right. We will see you guys there. Okay, well, thank you so much for tuning in to KUJH. Have a great afternoon.